Check this out. Check this welcome, out. welcome to BLBA Big Show. Hockey sports, life for the adult athletes. Yeah. Powered by the Beer League Players Association. You better follow me. Follow us. The BLBA on every social media outlet. Follow the crew on Twitter at Nicker Jones. And let's get it. Here we go. Welcome in the best hockey south world. Good week, everybody. What's going on? Here with my good buddy Jason. Jason, what's going on? Nikki Kamish, how's it going? I'm um, doing well, man. It's a great day. The Seattle Kraken are playing right now as we're recording. Uh, they're losing two to zero. Um, so that that's we'll talk about that here in a little bit. But what you just heard was you heard my uh, good friend Yuli. I guess good friend. He talked to me on on the podcast and in the interview you'll hear later. He's a tour guide in Iceland, and he also plays for Team Iceland. And what he just said was, "Welcome to the greatest hockey show in the world." So, I mean, we're we're worldwide now, basically. Worldwide. That's impressive. Um. So yeah. So before we get going too far, we got to tell you about where this uh, where the show is brought to you by, and that's hockeywolf.com. Ow, ow, ow. Ow, ow, ow. Hockeywolf.com. Really rad people, beer leaguers just like you and me, trying to find ways to make the game more affordable. Go over and check them out, hockeywith.com, and you can even find some BLPA stuff that uh, even we don't have, but we do have some new merch coming out, which I'm super stoked about, but uh, hockeywith.com. Ow, ow, ow. Hello. All right. So we got a lot, we got a, a number of things to talk about. I just told you, uh, you know, our, our friend Yuli from Iceland, he plays for Team Iceland uh, hockey over there, and he's also a tour guide, so he knows all the cool places, all the nightlife places, um, and so... We're going to lean on him a lot for when we go to Iceland. Jason's going to be in Iceland. Our buddy Frank's going to be in Iceland. You should be. In, everyone should be in Iceland. If you're listening, you should probably sign up for Iceland. We have like four spots left. Um, so you'll hear that interview later. But we're also going to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about are we are we good people, beer leaguers? Like, do we do the right thing? Then we're going to talk about GoPros in beer league. And uh, but first, I want to talk about uh, a couple things that are going on right now. As I just mentioned, Seattle Kraken playing their first ever game. I had to delay this recording because I wanted to see the the first uh, puck drop, and then they got a power play in the first minute of the game, and they blew it. So basically, what are your thoughts on the Kraken this year, Jason? You think they're going to be good, or do you think they're going to suck? I uh, I think they're going to be middle of the road for uh, their division, but I think that's probably because their division's not great. Mm-hmm. Um, I did take uh, the Golden Knights minus one and a half goals tonight in my uh, degenerate gambling. So uh, that is, what that means is I think the Knights are gonna gonna beat them by at least two goals tonight. Okay. Well, you're, right now you're it's two to zero right now, so it could be it, yeah. could, it could be ten goals. And I could don't be. I don't yeah, know our way. I don't know too much about gambling, so you'll have to be the BLPA gambling guy because I don't understand like. Minus, I, like it, it just almost like fuck. It. Like, just bet. Are they going to win or not? Like, that's how it should be. Really. Are the Knights win or will the or, or will the Kraken win? It, that that's the bet. That that makes it easy, dummy proof. And I wish that's how they do it, but I know they don't because obviously Vegas has to make money. So yeah. yeah. So what you're talking about is money line. So if you ever hear anyone say the the term money line, mm-hmm. that just means I'm picking. I'm picking a winner. That's how I'm uh, play. So if I said I, I took Golden Knights money line, that just means Golden Knights have to win. That's that's how I want to play. And it, I'm not a, I'm not a huge yeah. gambler. Like I like casinos. Like I'll play the slot machines. I really like three card poker, but it's expensive, and I don't like losing my. I, I want to gamble, but I want to win. And so I don't gamble yeah. because I usually don't win. Right. Right. Yeah. That's what they call it, gambling and not winning. Yeah. Well, I wish I just want to do winning. Uh, I want to go to Vegas and do winning. Uh, it, where, what casino can I do that at? That would be that would that would be what I want to do. Yeah, no, no one can blame me for that. Hey, one time, one time, I wanted to like uh, in my travels, I wanted to just collect money from everybody, and then you know, obviously live stream and go in and put it on just like one like red or black on the roulette table or something, and double it up and do that. But then apparently that's illegal. You can't you can't live stream from a casino for some reason. Like they got something to hide. Um, but I right. thought that, I thought that would have been cool if we go in there and we you know we get two thousand bucks and now we're up we're we're up a couple thousand and uh, I, I just thought that would have been fun and I thought people would have got behind it but uh, apparently they have rules about that I you know I hate rules really um, but uh, yeah I, I I'm gonna do some gambling but it's gonna be money it's only gonna be money line I already sound like a gambler now don't I you do yeah you got the lingo down yeah anybody want to play some money line with me you know. <laughs> <laughs> let's go on this money line me and you go down on the money line 
Um, but anyway, so I, I, you know what? I, you're right. The division that the, uh, the Knights and the Kraken are in, um, my beloved flames are in, uh, I think they're going to be at the bottom I, and I hate to say it. I hate, maybe, maybe they will be better than the Canucks, but they're not, they're not looking good this year. And I'm, I'm pretty upset about it. Uh, I, I'm going to watch them. I'm just not going to enjoy it. Yeah. I feel the same way about, uh, my Preds as well. I think they're going to be at the bottom. Uh, I'm excited to watch some of their youth play, but, uh, you know, going into the season, pretty much expecting, uh, to miss the playoffs and, and, for it to be a long season. You know what's hard about sports? Um, and I, maybe it's not hard, but it's it, it, this is why it makes me feel old. Um, because obviously, like, I'm rooting for <laughs> I'm rooting for adults. Most of them are younger than me now, um, except for Joe Thornton. I don't root for him, but I should because he's probably the only player younger than me in, in the NHL. Uh, but, uh, you, like, Mark Giordano, the captain of the Flames, a guy that I was like, I loved him. I, I loved his work ethic. I've met him a few times. Um, I thought he was a great guy. He got traded. And I... It, and it sucks. Like I, like I, that's the hard part about sports is you get, even though they're like adults and they don't know who you are, they, like you get emotionally invested into these people. And then something like this, the crack and come and Mark Giordano is no longer a flame. Am I supposed to not like him? And I supposed to cheer against him? I mean, how does that work? Yeah, I don't know. So maybe, uh, I, I think I'm different in this in that I like pretty much don't get attached to any player. Uh, I'm actually always trying to figure out ways that we can trade all the players on our team <laughs> for uh, an entire new team. Um, and maybe that's just because I cheer for the bread. <laughs> but what happens when they make the trade for the new team and you got the new guys, then you just want to automatically trade them. Yeah. Then I'm ready for them to go. Like, it's kind of like a, uh, what's that game you used to play where you start with a paper clip and, and you trade your way up uh, yeah. to see what like the best thing you can get is. Yeah. Like that's my goal for the press. <laughs> we need to be GMs and try that and put that into practice and just see like, yeah, we'll, t- we'll I, take the shittiest players and then we'll see who we can bamboozle to keep moving up until we have like, you know, the great, I mean, look what the, the Oilers basically did that, right? Like they just, uh, they kept trading up uh, with their first round picks. They weren't even trading them. Just, they just kept getting them until they finally hit the jackpot with Connor McDavid. And that's why I think they're a trash organization. I guess I'm gonna have to talk about that every single episode just to let everyone know that I think the Oilers are a trash organization. Uh, but it's, well, it's like me, like Chipper Jones, like I'm a diehard Chipper Jones fan. And when he retired, like I was, I mean, I was pretty upset about it. And then it's like, dude, like, what was it like 2012 or 2013? Like you're a 30 year old dude and you're upset that your favorite baseball player <laughs> retired from his job. And so I don't know, uh, you know, maybe, maybe that's the way, maybe I should be um, emotionally uninvested like you. Maybe that's a better way to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm dead inside, so I wouldn't wish that on anyone, but, uh, you know, it does make it a little bit easier for me. Well, here, here's what's good. Like I'm a huge college football fan. Like I'm a university of Oklahoma fan, like diehard. And it used to be like, if the Sooners lost, I, it would ruin my day. And, and, it, and it finally got to the point where it's like, like the, <laughs> these guys that are ruining my day because they're, they're not winning. They're like 18, 19 and 20 year old dudes. And I'm like, how, how am I letting these guys upset me when I, I think about all the dumb stuff I did when I was 18, 19 or 20, and I'm expecting these guys to be perfect athletes and always win games. And so right. I matured through that, but I'm still, I'm still a little, a little hurt about Mark Giordano being let go. Like I understand it's a business and you know, the salary cap and keeping him was a detriment to the flames, but he's still a hell of a player. So I'm, I'm still, I'm still a little bummed. So I don't, I'm just, I'm unsure if I should hate him root against him. Or just not think about them. That's what I. That's you know. I, yeah, I think you're you're allowed to still like him. Um, you know, I, I say I'm not invested in anyone, but uh, you know, I was certainly rooting for Shea Weber uh, last year in the the finals. Um, because you know, I, I wanted him to win one. He he seems like a good dude and uh, cheered for him for a long time. So I think you're you're allowed to still like him. Well, I, unless he does my flames dirt, like if he comes and puts like a hat right. on my flames and keeps him out of playoffs, fuck him. He's dead to me. Uh, but I guess like, I didn't think right. about, like Jerome McGinley, like I wanted Jerome McGinley to win, you know, a cup. I, I thought he kind of did the flames dirty when he left where he, where they, they made a deal for, uh, for Boston to, uh, whatever that, that return that they got back then a first and, and, uh, I can't remember the center's name off the top of my head that they wanted who turned out not to be good anyway. Um, 
And then he said, no, I want to go to Pittsburgh. And they got a shitty deal out of Pittsburgh. And, you know, then he went to Boston next year, of course. Um, so, you know, but I still love Iggy. Iggy's a great guy. Uh, but anyway, so yeah. that's our NHL talk. Uh, but I think that's relevant to beer league because most of us beer leaguers are fans of of NHL teams, right? So, um, for sure. So, hey, I had a I had a corporate meeting today. Corporate, okay. Like, like a corporation wants to be involved with the BLPA. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, that's awesome. Just two years ago, I got suspended from a, a job that wrongfully terminated me, and we started the BLPA. And here we are, corporation saying, "Hey, we really like what you're doing." And that, to me, that's crazy. And I'm not patting myself on my on the back, but I am patting myself on the back. But I'm really patting the people that are listening to this podcast and are in the BLPA because none of that would happen without you guys. So just know that people are noticing the community that we're building here, and I'm super stoked about what could happen. Uh, about what I talked about, I don't want to. I don't want to give too much away. Uh, you know, that's not my style. Uh, Jay, Megan, Brett, whichever one of you guys are my old employees that are listening, there will be no new stuff for you to steal today, but just know corporate, corporate's coming. I guess, I guess we did find a way to make beer, beer league cool. Eh? Um, that's my message to my ex-employers cause I'm a vindictive son of a bitch. Um, <laughs> um, but a, a lot of stuff going on. We started the, did we, I can't remember if last week, if we had talked about the Southern California draft experience, we just set that up in December. Um, so I'm yeah, we talked about it a little bit. Uh, I, I was telling you I was sad that I wasn't going to be able to go. That's right. So we had the SoCal draft experience. I mean, I'm, I'm heading to Austin this week. Uh, so the Austin draft experience is this weekend. Next week is the Vegas BLPA bash that sold out. And then we're a week off. And then we're in Vegas for uh, the draft experience. And then we're going to do our golf thing in Phoenix, which is going to be rad. And then we have a couple weeks off. And then we're back in uh, L.A. for SoCal. So super stoked that we kind of we got five tournaments here the rest of the way, and I'm super, super stoked about them. And, hey, did you see – Did you you haven't seen the uh, the Austin theme, have you? Because you don't have Facebook. I, did, I have not. So it's like it, it's like fast food hockey themes, like water hockey, oh. McDangles. Yeah, I have seen it actually now that, now that you mentioned yeah, it. it uh, the, uh, the In-N-Out one, I was like, that, that's my jam. Yeah, I'm super. I, I'm so super stoked about. I'm, I'm super super stoked about this theme. Like, I love all of them, um, but for some reason, the, the the biscuit king is named Busket King. Like, they tried to combine Burger King and Biscuit at the same time, and we didn't catch it. We didn't catch it until after they printed them, and they're like, "What do we do?" And I'm like, "Listen, like, we didn't catch it, so uh, no, no, no one will notice." they're never gonna know oh they're gonna know they're gonna know well we posted it and like in the first minute we just we got roasted <laughs> they're like well, what's a what's a busket and we're like uh you know it's like when you combine a burger and a biscuit duh like trying to completely play it off but i think they caught us but um they're still really rad i think they're really rad jerseys the tendies one i'm super you know you know you know me family all goaltenders um I, I really like that one so um super stoked with the vegas theme have you seen the star wars ones I have, yeah. Oh boy, those are fire too. Wait, hey, wait till you see the the SoCal theme, the bougie theme. It's gonna be, it's gonna be so fire, so fire. Um, yeah, I'm pumped for that one. And hey, we can do some gambling while we're out there. Oh, yeah. Let's get on that money line, bud. <laughs> <laughs> wait, are you, are you you're in Vegas? Yeah, yeah. You in Frank yeah, both in you Vegas? Know, I, uh, listen, bud. I, I don't know. If maybe don't don't play any league games with Frank. I don't want him to run you and you guys say, oh, we're not coming to Vegas now. How's yeah, you? no, I'm, I'm not playing. I'm not playing at all until Vegas. Oh, you're just letting that hand rest. I like that. How, how are you feeling? Good. Yeah. Uh, still a little sore, but I think it's. I think it's getting there. I think I'll be ready for Vegas. Okay, that's what I like to hear. That's what I like to hear. I'm um, okay. Next topic here. I didn't even mention that people can find us on Twitter, and I want. I want you to interact with us. Twitter. I'm Nicker Jones. This is Beer League Jason. Um, go follow us. Do all that stuff. If you think the show's worth a dollar, give us a dollar. How about that? That's what I keep telling people. They're like, hey, how can we support the show? Give us a dollar. That's what you can do. Patreon.com slash the BLPA. Um, okay. So something big happened in the in the hockey world today. In the beer league, even it's even beer league related. Um Bauer changed its logo. Have you seen this logo? I have. Well, okay, without getting my thoughts, what do you what do you uh what are you thinking? It it looks kind of uh Kind of think of the word. It, it looks like something that like a middle school 
uh, a middle school logo would use or something. I don't know. It just it doesn't look good. It, like, okay, you're right. It doesn't look good. When I first saw it, I didn't even know Bauer was doing a rebrand. Uh, like, it, it wasn't even on my radar until I saw like some stupid social media post. Like tomorrow, everything changes or something. And you're like, okay, that that's weird. And like, I've been watching a lot of uh, TikTok at night because uh, I'm having troubles falling asleep with my stomach. So I've just been, you know, TikToking. You know, that's what the cool kids call it. And there's this chick on there that he, <laughs> she's like, uh, hello, I, I graduated college with a graphic design degree. And I just, uh, I see these logos and I want to change them. And she makes them just absolutely stupid and ridiculous, but they're, it's funny. And so I thought this was what Bauer was doing. And when I saw the logo, I'm like, oh, ha, 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 TikTok, that, that lady. But no, this is legit what they're doing for their logo. And I, I can't understand why. I don't, I, like, I don't get it. Nothing about it says hockey, Bauer. It doesn't, it, it, it does nothing. It, like you said, it looks like a, a young kid drew it. And just, you know, maybe it was like the guy that owns Bauer uh, you know, the guy that owns Bauer, his son yeah. said, Hey dad, I like this new logo. And he's like, okay, son. Uh, yeah, let's, let's use it. It looks good. And th that's what it reminds me of. And I, I just, I'm dumbfounded that a, a, a organization of that ilk would pull out something like this. I mean, yeah, I agree. It, it looks like some weird half infinity symbol too. Like, I don't, like, like a, you said, it doesn't, it just, it doesn't scream hockey. It doesn't scream Bauer. It's just kind of strange. But, Think of the genius of this. They bring out a new logo. Everyone hates it, but all they talk about is how much they hate it. Yeah. That's still that's still getting their name out there. People are like, well, I gotta go check Bauer, see what we're talking about. And they check in like, oh well, I'm here, I might as well buy a you know pair of gloves. <laughs> you know, so that's a, yeah. maybe it's smart. So I just took the it looks like a it looks like a lowercase B. So I just took the B. And then I got on like Microsoft Paint and did BLPA or LPA, and I was like, okay, we can rebrand too, Nike or Bauer. What do you what do you think about that? They didn't respond to me, so I, I don't know if they if they like that. But <laughs> uh, well, they're probably listening to the show now, so maybe they'll uh, respond to you once I mean, they uh, once they listen. Okay, well, if they're listening now, like, let me ask you, quick, like, what, why don't you run this stuff by me and Jason? Like, just say, hey, hey, boys, um, here's what we're doing. You know, what do you think? And we'll get we'll give you like what. Uh, real hockey players are thinking about this. Like I can't imagine like Patty Kane like shows up because he's in the marketing, right? He shows up and they give him yeah. like this hoodie with this logo. And he's like, is this really, that's what his face looks like. He's, I know for a fact he's thinking, is this really their new logo? What the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's exactly what I can see it on his face. Like I'm a, I'm an expert face reader and that's what his face says. And I just, I mean, think about Bauer sitting in like a marketing meeting today and being like, um, that, that this this wasn't uh, the reaction we expected. Yeah, they have to be right. They can't think that was good, right? Yeah, I would think so. Like I, I, I don't know. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, it's it's really hard being uh, two of the smartest guys in, in all of hockey, don't you think? Me and you. Yeah, for sure. It's it's a it's a blessing and a curse. It, it is no doubt. It's it's a lot to it's a lot to carry on the shoulders. Really, it really is. Yeah. You know. So I mean, but we'll just keep doing our stuff and. Hey Bauer, next time, I mean, hey, listen, you can't. I say this all the time when when my wife makes fun of my jokes uh, and says, "Oh, that's not a good one," uh, which is rarely. But um, I say, "Hey, if I scored a goal every time I shot the puck, I'd be making a billion dollars." So you can't, you know, you can't score every time, Bauer. This time you missed, you missed wide, you missed an open net wide, as a matter of fact. And uh, next time, just run it by us. We'll we'll take care of you. Yeah, and and you know, consulting fees will be like a couple sticks or something. Like it won't be much. Yeah, not gloves because I'm not I'm not gonna wear bar gloves. But I, I like their sticks and um, yeah. I like their skates. So you know, maybe maybe kick us up some. You know, for the bros, the boys are buzzing. You know, let us go. Yeah. And I just want to I want to mention uh, this group uh, because they always they, they always talk about uh, how spit and chicklets. Uh, Love them and all this stuff. Oh, our on spit and triplets. And uh, I, I got an email today from, uh, from a potential advertiser, Jason. And they said, we want to do this. And I posted it because it's a funny advertiser. I mean, you probably know. I, I'm, I'm no free advertising, but it was Manscaped. And, you know, Manscaped advertises everywhere. And someone, right. said, someone said, oh, spit and chickens already did it. And I, my response was, okay, buddy. Well, um, spit and chicklets wouldn't respond to you chirping them on the internet but I will. 
And so I just want to mention uh, the VHU just to say, hey, I mentioned you. Spit and chiclets, your move. You know what I'm saying? Let yeah. Know, you know? Their move. Well, I'm you know, with it. Your move. I mean, listen, if you're going to say spit and chiclets mentions you all the time, well, I just did. So now what's spit and chiclets going to do? Let's yeah. go, you know? Let's, let's see what they got. Biz, if you're listening, you know. I kind of want to fight Biz Nasty. He just looks like a guy that, that uh, he'd, he'd beat me up for sure. But he just looks like if I, yeah. could get, if I could get one good punch on him, not because I dislike him. I, I don't dislike Biz. I think he's pretty funny. Obviously a smart, smart dude. Um, he, you know, as a hockey player, he, he was a good hockey player because he made the NHL. But as an NHL, he was not a good hockey player. Um, but if I could get one good punch on him, just to say, <laughs> he, he has a punchable face and I punched it, you know? Yeah. So uh, I'll tell you a quick story. I met. I met Biz uh, at the Winter Classic last year. I was standing in line with my son to uh, to go to the bathroom, and he was walking through, and he was one of the nicest dudes I've ever met, took a picture with us. Uh, so, you know, um, if you want to punch him in the face, I'm not going to stop you, but just know the feelings aren't, aren't mutual with me. Uh, now, I, I like Biz. Now, wait a second. I didn't say I didn't like Biz. I, I like just him. a punchable face. He, 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 I mean, you you have to agree with that. Look at his face. It looks like this looks like guy I want to punch. It's just, it's, 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 it's not good or bad. I'm not saying it's a negative. Yeah. There's, there's just some people that have okay. punchable faces, and I, like I'm sure, I'm sure he's he's a, a outstanding guy, a, a model citizen probably, and and he's a hockey guy, so I, I love him. He just has he just has one of those faces, right? Okay, that's fair. We. We all know people that have that punchable face, so hey, you, I can't argue with you there. You know who else? Dan, uh, Danny Vibes. Yeah, he's, he's definitely got a punchable face. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, so here's the deal. Here's what I want to talk about today. First off, I want to do this question and, and see if, if you would do the right thing uh, in a beer league game. Would you do the right thing? So here's the question. If... Another team, if the opposing team scores a goal, but the refs don't see it, would you tell the refs, hey, that, that goal went in? Or would you just let her go? Hey, if the refs don't see it, it didn't count. Well, as someone who has uh, played a lot of games with Frank, who is a master at hiding the fact that the puck went in, um, I have done this several times where – uh, I did not tell the refs that the puck actually went in. Did Did you just stay quiet, or were you just like, "Nah, that didn't go in. That didn't go in." Yeah, no, I'm more of a stay quiet. Like, oh, I don't know. I didn't see what was going on there. <laughs> um, like not denying it, but just being denying the uh, the knowledge of what happened. Right? Like, oh, I don't know. I, I'm, I missed it. Yeah, I guess for me, it's like I guess it depends on the situation. Like, if it's a team that I despise, and I wouldn't, I'd say nothing, right? But if it, if it was like, oh, it's a good game, good old boys, they hit, yeah, that went in, just let it go. Unless it was Frank, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh, I, I wouldn't want Frank to have any more uh, goals on his uh, resume uh, that he didn't need to. You know what I'm saying? Like, I want to keep his numbers down, um, and you know, sometimes he he has issues with that. And so why should we uh, exacerbate the situation, right? Just let it go. Yeah, that's for agreed. Um, but at one, <laughs> one time, uh, this reminds me of a story. I was playing beer league, and we came in for the warm-ups, and it was brand-new nets. It was the first time these nets had been uh, used, and they they strung them so tight that even, like, in warm-ups, if you just do, like, a little flip, it would hit the back of the net and just <laughs> fucking ricochet all the way back out. It was it was amazing. So we had called the refs Refs, look at this. You got to watch this. And we do it. I'm like, so be, you know, be, you know, be cognizant of that during the game, right? And they're like, oh, yeah, whatever. Literally three minutes into the game, I go down and a rebound comes out to me and I fire it in, hits the back of the net and ricochets all the way back out. We all stop and we go like, because it's a goal, right? And the ref's like, that that didn't go in. And we're like, what? And then why is everyone standing at center ice? He's like, I, I didn't see it go in. It's not a goal. So in that situation, I wish someone would have said, Hey, that went in, but the other team was like, uh, "Okay, it, it didn't go in." I guess I thought that was kind of shitty. That's why I yeah, think. Yeah, so that's a tough one. Uh, I I I don't very often shoot it so well that it, even with a well strung net, I don't think that it pops out that hard. So it was. I haven't. I haven't had that. 
but it wasn't it, it wasn't it wasn't well it wasn't like I'm not bragging about my shot. My shot's nothing to write home about. It wasn't well strung. It was way too goodly strung. Tight. Way taut. Gotcha. It was so taut. Um, and that's why it came out. And then that got me to thinking when we were, when I, when I was thinking about this question that someone posed, that's why I brought the question up about, would you tell them? I started thinking about, well, this is why refs should wear GoPros. And there are leagues that are going to refs wearing GoPros, which, you know, it works out for the ref, you know, the refs, cause if something happens, then you always have it on. But then, then I was thinking about the time that I actually used to wear a GoPro. And I think I'm going to go back to wearing a GoPro. Um, one Jason, uh, because why, why would we want to deny people, um, the, the joy of seeing me, seeing my game through my eyes and feeling way better about their skill level by watching me on a GoPro, right? Like, don't yeah, you, for pe- sure. People I mean, we don't give the, you got to give the people what they want. I mean, and it wasn't like, I didn't say, Hey, I'm going to wear a GoPro, but I, I was trying to get people to subscribe to our YouTube uh, because I said, hey, we're so almost relevant on YouTube. You have to have a thousand uh, subscribers and like seventy-five hours of watch time, uh, or maybe it's four thousand. It's it's a ridiculous amount, but we have like three hundred subscribers and like seventy-five hours of watch time. We need four thousand. They're like, hey, put a GoPro on, go live, and just have people watch you at a draft experience. And I'm like, uh, that sounds stupid. But then like, we'll watch it. And I'm like, right, well, if you'll watch it, I'm gonna do it. Um, but it made me think about uh, refs wearing GoPros. And why some refs like are, are GoPros allowed in your league, Jason? Do you know? Uh, I don't think they're not allowed, like specifically. But I also can't think of anyone that currently wears one. So I uh, one time I teamed up with the Heart and Stroke Foundation of Alberta to um, promote um, heart attack and stroke prevention a month, and so I played hockey every day for thirty-one days, and I I recorded myself doing it and I'd make little video a uh, daily video uh to do it uh to to raise that awareness of you know wh- where the defibrillator is how to use them yada 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 and so obviously I worked for a league at this point and you know it obviously promoted the league and um you know I'd, I'd go in and I'd do it and I'd see I'd see crazy stuff and I'd have to go into like hey guys like I'm wearing a GoPro to the other team I'd be like I'm wearing a GoPro it's I'm not doing it to watch my sweet dangles I don't have any this is what I'm trying to do so just, just to let you know, I'm not, I'm not that guy. You're not that guy, bud. You're not that guy. Um, You're not that guy. <laughs> um, and so, and then they still chirp me for wearing a GoPro and I'm like, but I'm trying to save your life. So you don't have a heart attack. What do you want me to do? And, uh, but I remember I caught this one, one play on, like there's a ref there, a guy comes in and kind of gets rubbed off the puck and it's a lower level game and he gets knocked down and he gets so mad that he overhand from laying on his back, he overhand chops this guy on the top of uh, his helmet and the guy falls down and the ref standing right there but he does nothing. I'm like, okay, that's weird, whatever. And, uh, it was on my thing. I didn't put it cause I didn't want to be a detriment to the league. And I, <laughs> I took this video to the league and said, Hey, here's what happened. Just in case anything happens, like maybe, you know, maybe we should ask the ref why he didn't call a penalty there. And the refs freak the fuck out about why, why was I even wearing a GoPro? This is bullshit. And it, it ended up making the league. They had to ban GoPros from the league because of this. And I just thought, well, that's- what the fuck? Like, th- so this ref's mad that he missed a call and now he doesn't want people wearing GoPros. That just seems counterproductive. Yeah, it is. That is crazy to me. And it, it's funny because like oftentimes in beer league, when games get out of hand, it's because of things like that where a ref should have done something and didn't. And then, uh, you know, it, so then now, uh, the team that's all slighted is going to take a shot at the other team, and then it goes back and forth, and, and that's how games get out of hand. So you would think that the league would would want some uh, accountability on the on the refs to be like, hey, you know, if a, maybe if a guy whacks another guy in the head with a stick, we we should call something to, uh, you know, just to settle the game down, if nothing else. Yeah, and you know, I get it. I mean, because I, I, I've worked for a, a big league, I've dealt with the emails of players complaining, and you just know if the refs had a GoPro or if players wore GoPros all the time, every little infraction that was missed would be an email to the league. Look at, look at this guy, Mr. Tripping, you know, um, I paid good money for this league. That's a big, that's a big uh, one that people use when they write it. I, I should do a whole segment on this podcast about what you should and shouldn't say when you write your league director. And the number one thing you shouldn't say is I paid good money for this league. Cause when I read it, when anyone in, in the office 
uh, that I was at Reddit, we, that was automatic eye roll. We knew we were done. We're like, fuck this, fuck this guy. Yeah. Like he, we know, well, I would play good money for this league. He, he's not serious. He just wants to, you know, um, but yeah, I, I just thought that was, it was really weird that, that that's how it's like the refs need to be held accountable. They shouldn't want you to not wear a GoPro because it makes them accountable. But I, I get the other side where, Hey, if you allow GoPros and you listen to the people that send videos, every missed infraction, and, and there are a lot of missed infractions, uh, that's just goes with the territory. They're going to get sent in. And so the league is going to be inundated. So maybe that played into it. Um, but you know, when I wish I would have had a GoPro on when that, when that ref called me a motherfucker, <laughs> Oh, I wish I would have, that, that would have, yeah, that would have been a good, uh, good incident to have so you could play that one back hey and listen i was i was i was going through like cleaning out old video content and stuff and i found <laughs> we did this yeah and I, ne- I never got to make the video because i think i just let it go because I, I didn't want too much more drama but everyone on my team made a video that said <laughs> that was basically saying uh yeah that ref did call nick a motherfucker i don't think us you had one jason but you were on that team uh but frank i found the one with frank and you know frank is like you know nick is a a great guy and no one would no one would ever not like him like i i don't know what went went on and you know but that it had to be the ref's problem and that ref did call nick a motherfucker and i just uh i i've fucking spent the whole night laughing at those videos just thinking about that situation i'll also go on record that ref definitely called you a motherfucker he did and you know i had no like and the, the funny part about it is what started that whole <laughs> that whole thing is I was literally helping the other team, the opposing team. Like I, I said, Hey, Hey yeah. ref. I was like, Hey ref. I like, I, you know, I, I run the tournament that, you know, the, the face off needs to be in the offensive zone because we start every, every power play in the offensive zone. And he's like, yeah, you don't, well, he's like, you don't, you don't tell me how to ref you motherfucker. And I was like, you, can, you can't call me a motherfucker. And then it just, it just, it just started. He's like, I sure can. And I was like, no, like you can't like you, these like are our customers. Like, what if you're calling them motherfucker? You can't do that. And he's like, all right, bud. Uh, <laughs> all right, bud. you need to leave. And I said, well, if I'm leaving, you're leaving too. And he was like, all right. And I was like, wow, that worked. <laughs> and he, He's yeah, like, we'll go he call. Follows you right off the ice. Yeah, he's like I'm out of here. He goes, you no, know, he goes. We'll, we'll go, we'll we'll go call the person that's running this tournament. And I was like, oh, okay. And so he walks over. He stomps over to his phone and he goes, "What's your name?" I'm going to tell the tournament director. I'm like, "All right, uh, my name is Nick Fleehart. And he goes, "Oh, you are the one running this tournament." And I said, "Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, I told you that." And he's like, "Well, I didn't call you a motherfucker." And I'm like, "Well." bitch like i got a whole bench over there that'll say that you did call me he's like well that's bullshit i didn't do it yeah let's go talk to the head ump and or head referee in charge and i'm like okay and so we just followed each other and he he was yelling at me telling me that he never called me a motherfucker and i'm like all right you did call me a motherfucker and i don't know why it got so uh, heated but you know that shit happens i wish i would have had a gopro so i could have then just pulled my gopro off and been like Brr, and he was like you motherfucker and i'm like that's you calling me a motherfucker but you know, yeah, such, a, such yeah. is life. Such is another, life. another, another check mark for the pro GoPro uh, side. Yeah, I'm not seeing too much. I'm not really seeing. I mean, I see the one detriment of sending it all in. Uh, that's maybe that's a con. Uh, maybe the con is that you're not very good, and I understand that. That's what's so weird to me, that people want to see, you know, the GoPro. But I think it like it's. I'm going to stream it live. Like this is going to be unfiltered uh, action. So you know. Yeah. Wherever I go with that GoPro, whatever I say, I mean, am I going to have to wash my mouth? Probably not. You know, uh, am I going to wear it? Are we going to talk about the money lines? Yeah, probably. So you're going to get some gambling advice. Probably. Um, you know, we'll talk about some food. We'll talk about ranch dressing. You're going to run the gamut. So I guess I get it. There, there's more than just me being on the ice. Like they're going to feel like they're sitting right. They're riding shotgun with the commish, you know? Yeah, no, I, I like it. And, I also would be a hundred percent on board with wearing a GoPro if I'm mic'd up mm-hmm. um, because w- just watching me play hockey would be extremely boring. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I do think I'm entertaining uh, on the ice. Yeah. So uh, I think listening and watching w- would be a treat. I think so. Me too. Like, min, 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 min. you know, they're going to get to see the motorcycle. <laughs> when I, hey, when I get that yeah. motor going, you know, I mean, it's going to, it's going to be something I think. So, Maybe maybe we'll hit that four thousand yeah. hours, just you know, lickety split, you know. 
Yeah, I like it. Go follow us over youtube.com slash the BLPA. Um, all right, let's 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 go to where I really want to go with with this episode. Uh, the interview with with my friend Yuli. Hey, you have you have any uh, questions about Iceland or any any exciting information from from your side on it? Because you're going to Iceland with Frank, right? Yeah, no, like yeah, I'm I'm just excited to get out there. We booked like uh, we're, we're going out a couple of days early. We booked like these glass cabins like out in the middle of nowhere, which I'm pumped for. Mm-hmm. Um, I've got some conflicting info on the Northern Lights whether we're going to be able to see them or not. So, uh, you know that's, uh, that's- that's- I saw would be him some la- good information to have. I saw him last night in Calgary, man. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Look, look, just go look. On, just go look on the video. Like they're all the videos are all over. Like they you could see him really good in Calgary. I mean, I still yeah. want to see. I still want to see him. But um, yeah, I, yeah, huh. yeah. I want to see him like in person. Like a video is not cool. I want to. I want to see them. See them. Yeah. Well, I saw him. I just looked out my front yard. Like I could see him. Okay, well, I haven't yet, Nick. Okay, so well, I'm just, I'm I'm just letting for. you know. Maybe, so maybe if you can't see him there, you come to Calgary, see him, you know. But they'll probably, they'll probably be way better in Iceland if we can see him. I want to do the hot springs for sure. I want to get like the, you yeah, know. Yeah, hot like the, springs, volcano. The, I, I, yeah, I mean, you, I think I got some bad news about uh, the volcano. I think I heard that they're not uh, – they're not they're not going right now. So uh, I, 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 you know, I'll ask Yuli about that. But, uh, yeah, I think that uh, – I don't think they're they're going right now. Um, but who knows when they'll be active again. Uh, but I'm super stoked about, uh, I'm also trying to get some pond hockey going with Yuli so we can play some outdoor hockey while we're there. Uh, I'd be into that for sure. And how about me, you and Frank, we all need to buy matching Iceland's like the, the wool sweaters. Done. Cause you know, those are done. And I, I can speak for Frank and say he's in too. Okay, cool. We'll buy, we'll buy all the same color and we'll, we'll take pictures. We'll take pictures. We'll model them. It'll be, it'll be something for sure. Cause you know, those Iceland right, sweaters, like, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like those Icelandic Nordic sweaters that are literally made in Iceland. Um, that's, Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, I know exactly what you're talking about. Are, are you, do you like to eat sheep or lamb? Do I like what? Um, it's all right. Sheep. That, that's their big thing. I think that's what I was reading on the internet. Okay. Sheep. Um, they eat the, they eat the head, like the sheep head over there. I don't think I'm going to do that, but I would be willing to try maybe some other part of the sheep. I might try the head. And they had like Oof. fermented shark. I read. Oh, I, gotta, I would definitely try that. I got to ask him. I got to ask you about that, but they, they have fermented shark. I read. So I'm, I'm super stoked about doing that. Um, and then also I'm making inroads on uh, a, a second Japan tournament. And yeah, I, uh, that, that sounds awesome. I don't know if I'll be able to swing that next year. Um, but you know, Usually when you, you usually will book stuff and I'm like, I'm not going to be able to swing that. And then I end up there. Mm-hmm. So, so who knows? Well, guess where else? Alaska. Oh, Alaska would be dope. Yeah, Got that one working too. So, all right, let's not get too ahead of ourselves. Let's get, let's get these people, uh, to weather really here. They, they want to hear from Yuli and Iceland. So here's my, here's my new buddy, friend of the show now, uh, team Iceland, uh, hockey player and tour guide over, over in, uh, Reykjavik. Is that how you say it? Reykjavik? Yeah. Uh, it's my friend Yuli. Here we go. All right, beer leaguers, what's going on? As most of you guys know, we're headed to Iceland at the end of January for one of our draft experience tournaments. And so I thought it would be cool uh, to bring uh, someone on that knows the Icelandic culture. And I found uh, this gentleman on Instagram because he was uh, saucing pucks over a volcano. And I thought that was rad. And so I want to introduce to you, Yuli. Yuli, what's going on? Thank you for being here. Thank, thank you for having me. Uh, so yeah, so I, I live in Iceland. I'm raised and born here, and uh, I've been playing hockey since I was six years old. And uh, I'm part of the national team of Iceland. And and for a living, I'm a I'm a tour guide basically. So I'm a, I'm I have my own company with my parents and with my family basically. Yeah. And, and- uh, What's what's that? What's and, that Instagram? Uh, that Instagram channel they can find you on because you yeah, you, uh, it's, uh, Iceland activities. It's uh, that's our, basically our family, our family company. <laughs> but I, I've been like, I've been uh, over the past year, I've been a little bit more personalizing the channel, uh, sharing a little bit like from my daily life, uh, what I'm doing per day, and uh, so I'm I'm either doing guided tours where I'm like. 
skydiving and uh, and then uh, or I'm doing some adventure with my family and uh, and and this last winter was the first winter where I like shared a little bit more from my hockey adventures and <laughs> and uh, you mentioned the shooting the ice bucks into the volcano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that was, was that's uh, is it hot there? Is it hot out by I mean I guess it would have to be, right? Uh at that moment, like I was biking on my like so uh so uh that morning uh, my my girlfriend she dropped her daughter off to the kindergarten and I had uh basically I had to pick up her daughter at eleven o'clock. So I started biking to the eruption like I think it was six, six thirty o'clock, I don't remember exactly. And uh <laughs> And I was in a rush. I drove down there, and then as I was biking uh, with my hockey stick on the back, it, uh, I didn't know at the time. But when I arrived to the eruption, four new fissures had just opened up, and uh, and then I, I thought I was just going to be shooting the puck into like a running lava. But I was able to shoot the puck straight into the eye of the fissure, the source of it, and uh, and the heat was like intense, like a I could go, I was just basically like 30 feet from it, like 10 meters from it. And, uh, and, uh, I could shoot it straight in. And, uh, and the reason why, um, uh, like that during that time, I, there was COVID going on in Iceland. So there was, everything was on shutdown and, and there was a rumor about, uh, we thought the government was going to open up uh the the border uh they open up the country in about one week or so <laughs> so so i was doing a lot of hockey things like training on my own like at our office and things like that and this morning i thought it would be cool to do a shooting practice into the volcano <laughs> and i was trying to say it was it was more for the fun of it but but it was also a hockey training <laughs> before the play of the nice <laughs> yeah well but a lot more fun well well, let me ask you this: Is is that like I know that no one knows, right? But is are, are the fissures kind of just ongoing for a while? Like, where is this going to be something that we can experience when we come to town? They at the end of January? are at, at the moment they are not active. Okay. Uh, they are at the moment they are cooled down and uh, and flying over the crater. Actually, flying over the fissure that I I shot the pack in. It's basically a hot pool of water now. Oh, meaning maybe in 100 years, 120 years, maybe I'll be able to, ah, not me, <laughs> my grandchildren will be able to skate on that crater. Oh, that would be, well, that <laughs> like would be insane. Like I'm in my mountain. Because cause I, <laughs> yes. I, I saw, I saw uh, uh, an outdoor crater that you were skating in uh, just, I think it was just last week that you posted it. Is that, is, is that yeah. something that just anyone could do? Like if we have a couple people that want to uh, brave the elements, can we go out and skate on that thing in January? Uh, yes. But uh, uh, but you have to you have to uh, of course go to it, and that can be challenging, and it can also be easy. It's like it depends on the conditions in the winter in the mountain, mm -hmm. and then it also depends on how our winter is. Because uh, in January, if if there's a lot of snow in the mountain, there's a good chance the craters are covered in snow. Snow, mm -hmm. and uh, so it all depends. It's, it's a lot about luck. But it all depends on the it depends a lot on the weather. Okay, well that's so, I, uh, I live in Western Canada, so I'm used to the snow. But uh, I definitely don't hike out into the mountains in the winter time, though. I'll tell you that much. Um, tell it, <laughs> tell us a little bit about Iceland. I mean, obviously you're a tour guide, so you so you know a lot about it, and you've lived there your whole life. As someone that's coming from North America, the United States, Canada, what are some little known things about Iceland that we should know uh, as we come over there? <laughs> it's uh um it's a hard question to to mm -hmm. talk about some uh it's a hard question to um what what would you like to know that's, well, that's the easier question to answer <laughs> okay well well okay let's start i mean because i want i want to cover a, a lot of things in, in a short time i mean i want to i want to know about the food i want to know about the nightlife and i want to know about yeah. the hockey so those three things we can uh, speak to those three things yes yeah. Yes, so I can speak of those three things. Uh, so the hockey is, uh, I would say hockey in Iceland is not a, a quite, it's not a high level hockey in Iceland, uh, sadly, but we have, we have some amazing players, but, uh, uh, but the, the, the hockey league in Iceland is like an amateur league. We, we don't get paid to play. We just, 
it's a hobby. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we have players ranging from like a really good. We have really good players ranging from all the way to a lower level, and uh, but then our national team, for example, is a lot stronger because then we have we combine all the best players, and then the level picks up a lot higher than the league is actually playing at. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we have uh, we call it old boys, but it's basically like it's guys from twenty five years old to to 40, 50, 60 years old okay. and uh, just about having fun and they 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 drink more beer than the than the than the the league team. <laughs> hey, they, that's what we're about. We're about They're the doing, beer. Yeah, yes. <laughs> there would be a there would be a similar team as you are bringing over. It's like it's all about just like drinking beer about with your buddies and just having a fun games that's and uh they don't. They don't practice a lot. They just. They just do games. <laughs> yeah. Hey. That, hey. That's what. That's what we're about. You know. On, on ours, like we don't even have teams, so we bring over all these oh. players. Uh, like so, we'll have we'll have eighty four players or so, and we'll make our teams by beer chugging contest the night before we actually yeah, play I heard games. About that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. So, so is there eighty four players coming? Yeah, we we actually we sold out yeah. within yeah we sold out within oh geez I guess it would be it was less than a week we we had to we had to, we were gonna just do four teams and we sold fifty six players out in two days and so we had to call uh, awesome. yeah we had to call the rink and say can we have some more ice and they you know luckily they were able to accommodate us so we're we're super stoked about it and uh, you know I, yeah. you know we, we've had some hotel so, issues so are you playing Go are you playing in Lugatalus or yes. Yeah. Leningrad. Yeah, that's that's where that's, a, that's the rink that I I started that when I'm six years old. I started playing at that rink. Oh, awesome! And uh, and uh, that was an outdoor rink when I started playing there. And uh, and then I uh, sit teams in 2007, and then I'm now I'm playing in the other ice rink. We, we only have two ice rinks in Reykjavik, and then we have one ice rink in the north. Okay. And uh, and uh, regarding like a uh, food culture and things like that. Uh, we have like old traditional food, and then we have old traditional food. Like old traditional food is like food that we had to store away for for the whole winter. So it was like a not it had semi rotten, like not like it was sour food, like a smoked food, salted food that was easy to keep for long long period of time. Mm-hmm. And then we still keep some of that food. I think it's in. I could be wrong. I think if I remember correctly, it's in one week in February, if I remember correctly. And then we eat uh, one week where we try to eat just the old food. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, just for the fun of it, but uh, we we still eat some of that food in our daily lives today. But uh, I would say traditional Icelandic food today is like pizza and hamburgers, just like NRL. <laughs> okay. but, uh, but lamb, is something we have always been eating since the Vikings came. It's our our main it's our main uh, tradition, like a lack of lamb, lamb soup, the hat of the sheep. Uh, some people really like the testicles of the sheep. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not there yet. Maybe when I get older. <laughs> we, we do we do and, ca- uh, calf fries. So it's it's the uh, like the the cow cow balls. That's what's a, that? That's what they call it. Like, yeah, cow ball, yeah. Yeah, so like, they okay. call them lamb fries or, or something like that, but that's pretty funny. And he said, you said head, head yeah, of yeah. lamb. Like I, I've seen that on the internet, yeah. the head of the lamb. But then also you were talking about the yeah. sour food. Is that like the uh, fermented shark? Uh, fermented shark is one, yeah. But like then, uh, like for example, if you if you like had lamb or, or, or had the sheep, you would have to store it if you were not going to eat it until like one month in, in or something like that you would have to store it and that either means meant that you, sm- you usually smoked the meat or or sussed it and then it was able to store longer and and some of the like and then some of the food would just go today we would just call it going really bad <laughs> <laughs> and uh and uh like almost fermented and uh, that's also like so so our our uh Everyone in Iceland usually had to sleep sitting up, so we would like sleep. We should three people in the bed in <laughs> in the in the old tower houses, and uh, everyone would be sleeping like upright, and uh, it was really convenient because then you could sleep more people in the same same room. It usually be like 
self supporting <laughs> people in the room, something like that, yeah. to keep the heat. And uh, because if you would sleep straight down, I, like there was a lot of, uh, I think it's called stomach reflex, like uh, acid, is it acid reflex? What is the name yeah. of it? When, uh, yeah, acid reflex. Yeah. Because, of, because of our uh, milk and uh, smoked meat and salted food diet, <laughs> we, we couldn't sleep down right. Otherwise, our teeth would go crooked right away. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, but... But then, so if you want to taste some of the good Icelandic food, I would recommend like a, a lamb, lack of lamb, uh, lamb soup. Lamb soup is actually one of my favorites. And uh, and then we have a lot of fish. It's like, that's also part of our traditional food that has been kept through the years. But yeah. when you go to a restaurant, it's all served in a more fancy way than it used to be served. So <laughs> <laughs> well, like everywhere in the world, basically. Well, I know you, you told me that you didn't drink, but uh, I, I have to bring it up just because we are the Beer League Players Association. Um, <laughs> how, like, how big of a culture shock are we going to be in, or I guess price shock, when we come and we try to buy beer? Is it going to be just completely outlandish in terms of cost? <laughs> it, it is. Uh, what I hear, it is more expensive than I think. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> but uh, so it's good for those who who uh, can't drink much, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, I think you guys probably drink a lot. <laughs> we, we, yeah, we, we, we can, From... we can drink some beer. That's for sure. <laughs> it's uh but, but uh, usually what Icelandic people do, they, they, they stay in until like midnight or something like that to drink. They have a party or something like that. Or like, for example, you guys would be able to start drinking right after the game. And then, uh, and then you would buy the, your alcohol at the at the alcohol store, which is a little cheaper than buying it at the bar. Yeah. And then usually people drink their alcohol before they go downtown, and then they they keep on drinking downtown, but then they don't have to buy as much alcohol. That's usually how how Icelandic people do it. That's, that sounds smart. It sounds like what we're going to have to do, I think. So you mentioned going downtown <laughs> and, and, and drinking. So I guess the next question is the nightlife. I mean, obviously we have 84 people coming from uh, Canada, the United States. I think we have a few coming from the UK and um, you know, so, so what are we in for in terms of, you know, after, after hockey or after our little draft party, like what are we, what are we in for nightlife in the winter? I mean, obviously it's going to be cold, right? So we're going to have to, we're going to have to dress appropriately. But uh, like in <laughs> nightlife and and all that, I mean, you know, the stuff hockey players like drinking and, and girls and nightlife, right? So, I I think uh, you would be uh, usually there's always some life during the weekends, like less on Sundays, but Fridays and Saturdays there's always quite a bit of life downtown. So I think you'll be in for a good nightlife. Unless there's like a crazy storm or something going on, mm-hmm. but I think you would always be experiencing some 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 sort of the nightlife we have here and the night. And I don't know how they have changed the rules now, but regarding COVID, I mean, but yep. uh, I mean the the opening hours of the bars are usually pretty pretty late into the evening, into the night. I mean, and. Uh, but I don't know how the openings hours are now. They have been mixing the rules back and forward. And uh, so, yeah, you will see. <laughs> hopefully, hopefully they open until late. They usually open until, I like, I want to say three, but uh, don't take me up on that number. <laughs> uh, we're, we're too old. I think we're too old to stay up till three drinking. Woo, that's, that, that's, that's 20 year old <laughs> stuff right there. Uh, what, uh, but, but the, but the life downtown usually starts after after midnight. Oh, usually okay. eleven. So we midnight. will have, we will have so, to stay up late. Gotcha. What what's uh, what, how is the COVID yeah. situation over there? I mean, I, I mean, I, I've heard it was it was good. It was bad. It's it's is it back to just being it, okay now? Or it's uh, pretty good now. I would say. I mean, we're still having some cases, but like it's uh, we hear about it less and less. I'm not. Uh, it's uh, but they they have, I think couple of weeks ago two weeks ago they started opening up the bars again oh good and good. Uh, so now people can party again it, and uh, which wasn't allowed for almost a year like i mean party until late in the bars yeah i think so they, the social aspect yeah I, I, I think that they also require uh visitors to be double vaccinated too to not have to quarantine so 
you know, that's something if you are yeah. coming with, if you are coming with us, I'm like I'm fully vaccinated, but uh, if you're coming with us, you, you got to get fully vaccinated. I'm sure. Um, what, what are we talking yeah, yeah. about temperature wise? Like we're at the end of January, so I know it's going to be cold, but what, like in Calgary, where I'm from in Western Canada, like cold is minus 30 minus 40. Is that, is that what we're looking at uh, in Iceland in January? No, I, I mean, you could get lucky and it's, it's like that. But uh, uh, temperature can range from like plus five, usually to minus ten. Oh. I would say uh, usually it's like from plus five to minus five. But that's that's a little bit like. Um, but then we could have like strong northern wind, and then it can feel like minus twenty, oh, minus yeah. twenty five easily. Oh, that's and, no uh, good. And so, and then you can have like during the day if you're doing adventure, for example, mm-hmm. you can have uh, rain in the morning freezing cold uh, at 12 and then you can have snowfall at 2 o'clock or something and so you can have all weather so it that's that's the hardest thing because then you you have to kind of be dressed in layers and you have to have the right layers and and uh, that's why I'm saying like if you get lucky it's minus 20 or minus 30 because that's that's the easiest weather to dress for unless it's like Good weather plus five. <laughs> ah, gotcha. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I, really, so lucky. I, I really want to buy. I know, like the Icelandic uh, uh, sweaters, th- th- they're a big thing. That's that's yeah, one thing that I want to buy. Yes, that's that's uh, uh, from from experience. That's the best best thing to wear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, once once you have worn the the wrong clothes in the wrong weather, then you don't go back from the wool. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I want to. Sounds I, like I'm. I, I have some questions from people that are coming over. I said, "Hey, you know, I'm going to be talking uh, to you Lee, today, and uh, yeah. you know, if you have questions, so um, you know, we, we've already talked about ho- hockey culture, but uh, uh, a listener named Greg asked, "Are there any issues like getting gear in Iceland? Like, w- what's the kind of cost for hockey gear? Is it hard? Do you have to get it from you know out of the country? How does that work?" Uh, there is it's. It's uh, it's quite it's it is expensive, uh, but now the next the nearest hockey store that's selling a lot of gear is in Akureyri, the north. Uh, it recently moved from the capital, so getting hockey gear in Iceland is uh, it's hard. I would say like getting the exactly the thing you want, and it will be a lot cheaper to bring it with you than buy it here. So I don't recommend anyone to not bringing their stuff because in Canada and, and the States you get it a lot cheaper than you get it here because when we order something from the States or from the hockey stores there we, uh, they add taxes onto it and things like that for so sure, don't, sure. don't buy it here <laughs> <laughs> for sure um, okay uh, so let, let me ask you this as someone that's coming from the States uh, you know is, is there any is there any cool things that we could bring you know for, for maybe local hockey players we meet or yourself that you can't readily get there that would just be like, Oh, cool. Th- you know, thanks for bringing that. Like, is, is there anything like that? Uh, <laughs> uh, no, I mean, as long as you are like, just bring the, the good attitude. That's, that's basically okay. the best. <laughs> okay. Perfect. There's, uh, I mean, you can get pretty much everything nice and it's, it's, uh, yeah, it, I would not say. I would not say. Uh, yeah, you don't don't have to bring anything. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, let's see. Uh, someone asked, uh, "What color of tape do you use on your stick? White or black?" <laughs> Myself, uh, I use a black, black one. Black. But I, I kind of have to switch over to white because uh, I just bought myself a synthetic ice in my uh, office. And uh, the black tape is marking my eyes, so I kind of have to sit. <laughs> okay, uh, let's see. The next question is: uh, If you if you eat chicken wings, do you do you eat yeah. them with blue cheese or ranch dressing? What's the, what's the ranch dressing? Oh, okay. Well, you answered the question. So ranch is like I, I'm originally from like the southern United States, and ranch dressing yeah. is just a uh, I don't know. It's like a fat. It's like mayo and. Um, Oh no, I can't even think of. It. There's like a, there's like a ranch seasoning and mayo, and it's like it's it's the oh. whole thing. Like we're in Buffalo, obviously there's buffalo wings, right? 
uh, they don't yeah. they don't do ranch. They they make fun of you if you eat your wings <laughs> with ranch. But I love ranch dressing, so it, <laughs> it just works. So oh, you heard so, it here: no ranch so in Iceland. I, like, like I would think I would definitely not go for the cheese, <laughs> <laughs> the blue cheese. I'm not a cheese guy, other than the normal bread cheese. Mm-hmm. But like, uh, I like my wings like crispy, and then like probably I would probably pick the ranch ranch sauce dressing. Okay. Instead of the cheese. <laughs> oh, good. That, yeah, that's my type of guy right there. Um, okay, so obviously we're in the States. Uh, we're talking hockey movies. Uh, Mighty Ducks. Obviously they had to play Team Iceland yeah. and, uh, you know, Gunnar yeah, Stahl. And, so, uh, yeah. I, I mean, were you were you a fan of how they portrayed uh, the coach of Iceland there? Dennis the Wolf Stanson. Mm, no. And to tell you the truth, I don't really remember the coach <laughs> of the Iceland team, Iceland team a lot in that movie but like I, I, I love the movie and I, when I was a kid I didn't mind at all that I just thought it, I didn't mind at all that the Icelandic team was was a, was a bad team okay, <laughs> or okay. the mean team I mean yeah hey they're uh, it's, at, it's the Viking culture kid, right? it was just a movie yeah 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 um, <laughs> and uh, I, mean, I mean we cared for the for the mighty, for the ducks <laughs> even though we were from Iceland I mean I don't remember how old I was eight nine years old something like that uh, when the movie came out, <laughs> yep. but I love the movie. Perfect. Um, and as a kid, we don't we don't get offended. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, I'm definitely like I'm a big history guy, so I, I'm definitely interested in kind of like the Viking culture. Um, you know, we, when we do these tournaments, we make a theme for every tournament, and the uh, jerseys that we give to each because every team has its own jersey. And so we want to do like a, a cool Iceland theme, and we obviously don't want to offend anyone. If we did like. Uh, Viking mythology uh, in terms of like, you know, the theme, obviously Odin and Thor and, and uh, Loki, uh, is that going to be an offensive theme to the, to the people of no. Iceland or would they think it's really cool? No, I think it's really cool. Like Icelandic people are, I mean, we used to be heathens when the Vikings came mm-hmm. and then, uh, and then we were like, we, we, we had like one guy, this one guy decides that if he should be Christian or, or heathen mm-hmm. and he, He's probably influenced by the king at the time, but he chose that we should be Christian. But heathens were allowed to practice their heathenness uh, as they as they wanted, but they had to do it like kind of secretly. Mm-hmm. They couldn't be like flashing it. And uh, but then over the years, the Christianity just took over. And uh, but then over the past years, uh, the generations like my generations is not that strong believers. I would say not we are not that strong Christianity anymore. The older you go into my, like if you go to my grandparents, they're much more stronger into the the belief. And uh, but as the younger generations are growing up, uh, we we don't really care what people believe in as long as they are happy and not harming others. Mm-hmm. So heather and uh, or, or Christianity, we, we like it all. Like the like actually people like the heather and the stories from the Vikings and things like that. It's part of our uh, story and our ancestors, but we also we are a Christian nation. But like we used to be heathen as well, we embrace it all. But as I say, as long as people are happy and and doing their own thing and not not forcing it or harming other people. <laughs> yeah, good to hear. Good because I, I, I got I got some cool jerseys in my mind that we're gonna make. I'll, I'll actually I'll make one for you too, and I'll, I'll bring it over. I mean, obviously that, we're, we're full, but I, I'll bring you a cool jersey. But uh, last two questions here that I have for you. Um, yeah. What What is your favorite part about uh, hockey in Iceland, and what is your least favorite part? <laughs> my favorite part, you mean as uh, in the league or? Or what I'm doing in my free time in the mountain. Oh, I think it's just. I mean, what's your? What, I mean, what what do you like say? Oh, I really love this about playing hockey in Iceland. So so, I love, like, for as a as a on on a regular ice, I love playing for my from for Iceland for the national team. Uh, so I train pretty hard for that career, and I am getting older and older. I'm getting higher in age, so uh, I have to train a bit harder, <laughs> compete with the younger guys now. Yeah. And uh, But the league is what I lo- I like the, the league the least. <laughs> the Icelandic league. It's, uh, 
because the tempo is a lot slower than we play in the in the national team. So, so uh, I would say that's my least favorite part, and the, the, my favorite part is playing for the country. <laughs> yes. And uh, do you get to travel but, around tournaments? To, to like, is there like if if you're like Iceland national team, do you guys travel to different countries and play in like national tournaments, or is it just kind of a uh, the the winners from from so if we win the Iceland league, we can go to the Continental Cup, and that's played in different countries. Okay. And uh, and if we win the first Continental Cup, that's basically Continental Cup is like the the winners from each like the. Like the Icelandic champions will go and play against uh, the champions from other comp- countries, and then until there's like one final uh, winner. <laughs> okay, awesome. And so we, and uh, uh, that's pretty amazing. But but what I don't like about the Icelandic league is because we play about there's only three teams in Iceland, mm-hmm. and so we play about uh, 15 games or so, plus minus. Pair winter, but that those games sort of like spread over like for like from uh, September until like March, April. So oh. so sometimes we don't have any game during the month. Sometimes we have one game. Sometimes we have four games. So it's quite uneven. So we, so it's hard to be training for it because you it's really unregular. Unreg- like in in other leagues elsewhere, you usually have one game per week. It is much more. You stay in much better hockey shape, mm-hmm. game shape, when you play in that kind of league. That's what I don't like about the league. Gotcha. Well, hey, that hey, that that's I I would love to play more too. So I understand why why you, why you hate that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> last question from yeah. from the listeners: If there was one restaurant that you would send us tourists to, which restaurant would you send us to? <laughs> That's a that's a hard question. I, I would reckon, recommend the restaurant in my town, forty minutes drive from Reykjavik. Okay, okay. That, that's <laughs> no, not that's bad. No, it, uh, 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 I would. There is a lot of good restaurants in Reykjavik. Uh, I like. Less, I I would not say I'm the strongest one in recommending restaurants in Reykjavik, but uh, the one I like a lot is uh, called Tapasparen. There's actually two tabas bars. I can send you the link to the one I've tried. Okay. And uh, in in that restaurant, uh, they offer like an Iceland menu where you can like have like six different dishes with uh, with Icelandic food. Like you get like a uh, uh, lamb. Uh, I think you get puffin. You, I think you can get whale, but you can you can skip some of it if you don't want to eat whale and things like that. You get I. I don't remember if there's a horse and then like a uh, then a lobster, uh, pink, uh, Arctic char. I don't. Uh, I think it was Arctic char. So I think four years since I ate there last time. <laughs> and uh, and then you get like a shot of uh, black death, which is which we have the other name for like our strong alcohol. We have brandy wine. It's called an Icelandic, but. Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> but it's also sometimes called black death. Okay, well, perfect. Hey, I'm super, so I, I'm super stoked about. It. I mean, you just you've made me even more excited. Like I was already like we still have tournaments. Like like this weekend we're in Austin, Texas, and then we're in like Las Vegas a couple oh. of times. Then we're in Anaheim. But I, like I'm just like counting down the days until uh, like because I'm gonna come over for we we actually play Wednesday and Thursday or we drafts Wednesday. Our games are Thursday and Friday. But I'm gonna come like a few days before and stay a few days after, and I'm super stoked about coming over there and you've just made me even more excited actually. So, so thanks. Awesome. Thank you so much. Um, it's, uh, let's see. And then like, if you like, because like I said earlier, like, uh, the, the weather is, is a big, big part of all plans. And you are welcome to like, let me know, like, ask me like, before you come, uh, about how the conditions are. Like I can tell you if the, if the pond hockey is of is a fav- in the favor of us, or if it's like if, if it's favorable, I mean, okay, and uh, or how the weather is looking, I can usually you can usually see the weather okay accurately three days before. Okay, perfect. <laughs> but then, but I can see about weeks I had like a certain idea of the weather. Everything past one week, you 
cannot really listen to the forecast that is longer than one week ahead. Okay, perfect. Well, we'll definitely be in touch and, you know, maybe, maybe we'll, we'll try to set something up you with some kind of tour that you can give us and we can get some guys and at least, you know, get some business going to you too, because you know, it's important for important for us hockey players to support other hockey players. So I think that would be really cool. Um, before I let you go. Yeah. Uh, so the way we usually open our show, like our intro is welcome to the greatest hockey show in the world. Is there any way you could say that in your native tongue and I can just open the show, uh, like that. Yeah. Uh, you say, was it like, welcome to the greatest hockey show in the world? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, welcome in the best hockey thought world. Like that. Yeah. <laughs> perfect. I can, I can say it one more time. Yeah. Huh? Do, do, do it one more time. One, two, three, go. Well, welcome in the best hockey thought world. Loved it. Loved it. Thank you very much. <laughs> Yuli, I do. I appreciate you taking the time out. I know you're a busy guy. I appreciate you taking the time out. I hope to get to meet you when I'm in town and thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, amazing. Thank you very it's, much. For uh, being here. Thank you so much. And I hope, I hope I, I, uh, I, uh, I answered everything, uh, <laughs> understandably. <laughs> yeah. I, I, your English, uh, your English is great. And to, everyone can go uh, uh, follow Yuli, uh, Iceland activities. His, his Instagram page is great. I mean, obviously I found him because he was saw some pucks into a volcano. You should check that out. I know they have like some hot bass that we, hopefully we can get the Northern lights or something we want to do. Um, but go check him out. Iceland activities. And like I said, Yuli, thank you very much for joining me and I will definitely thank be you so in much contact. For having me. No problem, buddy. I'll talk, yeah. to, talk to you later. Bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. All right. That was Yuli. Does it, hey, I know it, I already know the answer for me and it's yes, but how, how much more stoked are you about Iceland after hearing Yuli? Oh, super stoked. It's, it's I, I can't wait. Like I, like I'm literally like, I, I want to stop what I'm doing now. Like I don't even want to go to these other yeah. five. I just want to go to Iceland right now. So, yep. So, I, uh, Man, I can't wait. Surprised about the weather, what he said, right? I mean, he he said that I thought it was going to be like Calgary minus 30, minus 40, but he said, you know, plus five, plus five to minus 10, which isn't really all that bad. Yeah, no, I actually looked that up uh, when we first booked it, and it, it was like comparable to like New York or Chicago around the same time. So cold, but not like. Uh, you know, Canada cold. But it, but it is wet because it's surrounded by water, so it's going to be a, it's going to feel uh, colder. But then it's the wind, right? If the wind's blowing really hard, we're right. going to be fucked. But I'm uh, I'm super stoked about Iceland. I'm super stoked that uh, really can't he was able to come on and uh, and uh, hang with us. So other than that, man, you got uh, you got anything else uh, you want to chat about, Jason? Before we before we end this week? No, I think I'm I'm good. We need we need a we need a third co-host, don't we? We do. You know what? I'm, I'm glad you brought that up. We do. We need a. Uh, we need some balance on this on like, this podcast. Like sure. a female. Yeah. That doesn't know everything about hockey, like us. Right. Yeah. I mean, or does either or, way, but just I think I think we need a female voice. Uh, you know, just to even us out. I think so too. So if you know any females that have this the beer league mentality. Hey, let's let's get them on. Let's get them a tryout and see see if they uh, see if they can rip it up. I mean, I, I think it's gonna just basically you know being her probably you know chirping us the whole time, which is fine. You know, we we, yeah, we, we deserve we, we deserve to be chirped. Um, but I think we do need some balance. We 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 gotta figure that. But I mean, our the show's been getting good. People say they like it. You know, they like having you know our back and forth. Uh, now we got you as the the, the gambling guy. Uh, you're gonna make me a degenerate. I'm super stoked about that. And, uh, yeah, but, uh, other than that, I hope you guys, you know, in the next, next five tournaments, I hope I see one of you, you know, uh, one of you there, two of you there, three of you there, come talk about the show. Yeah. How you think we can make the show better? Uh, I'd love to hear it and we'd love to interact with you. So hit us up on, uh, on Twitter. Uh, I'm a nigger Jones. That's beer league. Jason, obviously at the BLPA and, uh, Hey, don't forget to, you know, give us a little rating, give us a review. That's how people know that uh, we're doing good. That's how we know we're doing good. And that's how we can let other people know we're doing good. So, other than that, Jason, any closing thoughts? Nope. All right, friends, be good or be good at it.